Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look for ways we can work together to advance the cause of Christ among free will Baptists. Today, we have here with us Miss Judy Combs Puckett. She's a mother of three and a grandmother of seven who comes from a large family with several free will Baptist preachers. So we know uh, she's got something to say for us. Her father was a pastor, many brothers and a son and a husband. Uh, And she and her husband, uh, he's a retired pastor. They live in Norman, Oklahoma, and they attend Summit Fellowship Free Old Baptist Church in Moore, Oklahoma. So she enjoys reading, writing, genealogy, and especially keeping up with friends and family on Facebook. So, Ms. Puckett, thank you for joining us today, my friend. Thank you for having me and for addressing this issue. Well, look, I appreciate you writing this article, and I encourage all of our listeners to check out her article, Can You Hear Me Now, in the most recent one magazine, the June edition. And so you wrote that. What led you to write that particular article, Ms. Puckett? Well, uh, not being able to hear uh, really affects worship experience, and I have had hearing issues for my entire life. Um, And I know that I'm not alone. Uh, As I've gotten older, the issues have become greater. And uh, a lot of seniors have hearing uh, impairment and they are unable to really access everything in the worship service. So being able to address these issues, I think will help our pastors and our church leaders um, understand what the um, uh, problems are and try to address those issues so everyone can have the same information, the same access. Oh, that's good. And so I'm a pastor. Um, I'm working in a church. I'm, I'm a attender of a church. What can we do to help those who are hard of hearing to better enjoy, let's say, like the music, for example, in the worship service? Mm-hmm. Well, um, the, the term hard of hearing is used a lot, but sometimes... Um, it, it, the meaning gets lost uh, mm. because I, I begin to use the term hearing impaired because it gives a better explanation of the fact that people are struggling and they, um, they have an, almost an invisible um, handicap because they don't talk about it and no one else does either. So it's something that uh, is often overlooked. And if you see Uh, a blind person or a person who cannot walk, uh, it's easy to be able to see what their limitations are and be able to help them. But having hearing loss is um, something that no one thinks about unless they are reminded. So um, in as far as the music goes, uh, we hear the sound, we hear the uh, musical instruments, but we don't always have the same kind of experience because Uh, Instrumental music particularly and uh, electronic music uh, is distorted by those who wear hearing aids. The hearing aids give you a different sound. And I've had my husband at times to give me a little elbow and tell me I'm singing in the wrong key. Uh, And so I have, of course, stopped. Uh, But it's hard to distinguish the key even that you're singing in unless you can hear the voice of the uh, music leader. If that person has a good mic and they are able to sing so that you hear their voice more than you hear the instruments, that is very helpful. Mm. Uh, you, you need to be able to hear the melody to be able to participate. And uh, if you're using a hymn book, make sure that you announce the uh, page numbers and it wasn't doesn't hurt to announce them twice so they can be heard and uh, accessed. And also, if you're using an overhead screen, it's important to have the words displayed in a timely manner so that you're not trying to play catch up. So all those things kind of go in line with the the music and having an acapella or a very familiar song once in a while is is also very helpful. Oh, that's great. So we want to remember it's a really hearing impaired is a is a better term, and you don't know who could be hearing impaired. Exactly. We often think of older people, but also younger people uh, can be hearing impaired as well. And so that's good information about how to help them to be able to participate in the music and the worship service. 
what can we do to help them to maybe get more to hear the announcements, to know what the announcements are, and to get more out of the message? What are some things we might be able to do in that area as well? Well, these are two areas that are critically important. The message is the most important part of the church service, <clears throat> and it's important that everyone is able to hear and, and understand what's being preached. Um, to announce the text uh, ahead of time so that we can find in our Bibles what the subject is and to be able to um, uh, get the context, even if we don't get all the words. Um, having an outline on the overhead screen is great. Um, and also having um, something that um, to me is most important, having a good public speaker. Uh, this may be something we don't think about because preachers are taught the Bible, they're taught Homiletics are taught different things, but very often they are not uh, very well equipped at public speaking. But using good diction, um, not speaking too fast so that the words all run together. Um, also making sure that their, joy, their voice projects. And if you have a microphone, this is usually pretty easy. But if you are not using a microphone, that's a problem. But I know it's, uh, as a pastor's wife, I know they have a lot of things to think about when they go to the pulpit. Um, but preaching is their major responsibility. Mm -hmm. And um, they should do everything they can to make sure that um, their public speaking voice is adequate to be able to uh, be understood by everyone. It's, um, if the information is lost, especially like with announcements, uh, if someone is sick or someone in the church passes away or you can't hear the, um, the location or the date and time of an event, then you feel left out and you feel lost. And when people begin to feel left out, they just usually stop coming. And that's what a lot of people do. Uh, I continue to go to church services. I have dropped out of conferences and um, retreats and so forth, because when there is no uh, visual aid um, or if you cannot socialize, um, you're really, there's no reason for you to be there. So for that reason, uh, I haven't dropped out, but I continue to come to church. I need that. Mm -hmm. I need that uh, interaction with people and I need the, the word. And so I, I hope that people will understand that um, it's, it's not just something that is an option about them dropping out. Some people drop out and stay home and watch TV so they can read captions on the TV screen and, and understand the message, but that's not the ideal. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can address issues enough that everyone feels included. That's great. And so you're really getting at kind of the, some of the barriers to socialization. And so, Talk with us a little bit more about some of the barriers of those that um, are hearing impaired have in trying to socialize with others at churches, and then what kinds of things we might be able to do to help them to a little better with that. Well, this is probably the most difficult area to change because uh, the very nature of socializing is that people are talking loud they are visiting and usually it's in a large open air area that makes it more difficult to hear. But I've addressed several things in the article uh, that I won't go into today, but if you're speaking one-on-one -on -one with someone, make sure that, that that person is hearing what you say. Um, it's okay to ask if uh, they understood or if they got the information. Um, and speak clearly and distinctly and watch for verbal and phys uh, physical cues to see if they heard you. If you tell something that's very sad and they smile, they probably haven't heard you. Hmm. Or if um, they just look lost and don't respond, uh, that's telling you they have not heard you. So uh, speaking one-on-one, -on -one, it's good to make sure that the person is hearing what you're saying. Uh, but when you have uh, socials and church dinners and so forth, um, being able to offer uh, a room away from the noise and the crowd, a small place where 
several of those who are hearing impaired can gather and each gather uh, it is a good option. Um, they may not choose to do that. They may uh, prefer to stay with the large group, but at least they have uh, the option of doing that. I think one of the best things that uh, pastors and church leaders can do is to have kind of a feedback session mm. where they gather some seniors in their church and people who they know for sure have hearing impairment and um, ask them for feedback, ask them for ideas and for the barriers, uh, the things that keep them from enjoying the worship service. And um, if you do that and you can make small changes, uh, sometimes it will be particular to your church because every church is different. Every church building and acoustics are different. But if you ask for feedback and uh, you're able to get their idea of why, how they struggle with hearing, it will be very helpful to every church. And I think awareness is the biggest thing. Find out who is hearing impaired and try to accommodate them in ways that will help them enjoy and have access to the same uh, message and information and social activity that other people have. That's great. That's some wonderful information, Miss Judy. So thank I thank you for sharing it with us today. And I thank you for taking the time to write that article. Can you hear me now? And so I encourage all of our listeners to take the time to look in the June 2000 or 2021 uh, section there of one magazine and read that article and think about what you can do at your church and you personally can do to help those who are hearing impaired. Thank you, Miss Judy, for your time today, my friend. Thank you for addressing the issue. And um, like you, I hope others will read it, especially our church leaders, and that it will be something that makes a change for those who have that problem. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate you uh, checking out the Better Together podcast. Please like us on Facebook if you've not done so already. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this podcast and others with other people in your church and around in your community. And remember, we truly are better together when we work together for the cause of Christ. Thank you and may God bless you.